Good afternoon, my name is Parag. What does it take to dream big? Well, I really don't know. But I do know that each one of us is a unique piece of art created by God. And each one of us has the power to dream. I am going to start with a story. The story began long time ago with a little village boy. This little village boy would go to his mother every morning and she would hand him a, a quarter of a rupee and he would run to the nearest bookshop in his village and buy a book. The book would consist of many stories, amazing stories and these stories became a part of his life and he became completely lost in the world of dreams. The storyline of almost all the books was the same. It used to be that there was this young man, the king had announced that somebody who will make his daughter, the princess smile, shall get half the kingdom and the daughter in hand. And the boy would feel very sorry when this man used to go through his trials and tribulations. And then he would come back and win the kingdom and he would feel very happy about it. And he would feel very sad at the end of the book and would wait for the next day to arrive for his mother to give him another quarter of a rupee. The boy then went to the city, started a small chain of photo finishing lab, went on to into the vending business, became very successful, became India's largest vending distributor. He then went on to the real estate business, did several projects in real estate, did extremely well for himself. And he then went into aviation, golf course, hospitality, finally education, the works. And today he stands in front of you to give you a TEDx talks. This story is about me, ladies. <laughs> Imagine, a quarter of a rupee can make a man dream. And thanks to my mother, she is here with me. She used to give me that quarter of a rupee and she helped me dream. And it's very important that each one of us dreams. Why is it important to dream? It defines your trajectory. If you dream small, if I dreamed small as a village boy, I would have remained in the comfort of the village of my home. I used to live in a town called Daun. It was a very small village in those days, talking of 50 years back. I would have remained in the comfort of my village, but because I had learned to dream, I came to the city and I stand in front of you today. It's not possible for any single man to ever achieve whatever he does without his team of people, his partners, his family, his relatives, his parents, his employees. Everybody plays a big role in a man's success. Why does one dream? One dreams because you hold on to hope. Dreams give you hope. I think the most important element of a dream is its ability to give you hope. And it's very important for every human being to survive. For without hope, there would be despair. Also, I think more importantly in real life, if you follow a dream, you are not pursuing money. You are not passionate about money. You are pursuing a dream. Money becomes then a byproduct. So you are going to wonder how did a businessman transition into education? Well, here is the story about it. I was sitting with a friend of mine, a very dear friend of mine one day, sometime in 2004. And for a moment, there was a brilliant silence, a beautiful silence between us. And we both said it at the same time, God has been very kind to us. Time we gave back something to the society. And at that moment, the words of Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru stuck in my head. And I said, you know what Nehru had said? That the temples of modern India are in education and not in the traditional temples that we'll go to. It's there that my journey, I, I didn't know anything about education. But I moved into education thereafter. I began my journey by going to Oxford, Cambridge, Stanford, Harvard, several universities I visited. But before I went there, I had many questions bothering me. I said, what is it that makes a young man in India dream? 
somebody wants to be a ratan tata somebody wants to be a steve jobs somebody wants to be an astronaut somebody wants to be a priti zinta or a sachin tendulkar but why is it that only a few make it why do others become just me too why do students who perform very well in academics end up performing moderately in life they don't pursue their dreams and then why do moderate students perform brilliantly when they go outside our country these questions were bothering me and when i went to the us i was very stuck by the liberal arts system of education there and that's when the dream of flame the foundation for liberal and management education began for me of which i was the founding chairman here is some stunning statistics for you the stunning statistics is that 24% of us presidents come from liberal arts background 23% of Pulitzer Prize winners come from liberal arts background. 19% of uh, Booker Prize nominees come from liberal arts background. 20% of Nobel laureates come from liberal arts background. So I said we must bring liberal arts to India, and that's how the dream of Flame began. We began Flame in 2007, but you know I am not the sort of person who can stay in one place too long, and that was my time. My calling was. next i said india needs india's population demographics are different india needs something different what it needs is leaders leaders and entrepreneurs and business people who will even dream bigger so we began the midas midas experiment the midas experiment was very easy and very simple I had a, I have a dream. My dream is to create ten thousand entrepreneurs. Each entrepreneur must empower and employ five hundred people each, and these five hundred people should take care of four Indians' health, welfare, and education. So at the end of ten years, I want to impact two crore Indian lives. That's my big dream. That is the dream I carry with me. That I want to create ten thousand entrepreneurs in ten years. We began this dream, but we had many stumbling blocks. well here is something that might interest you we do we do psychometric profiling of almost every student who joins our course and we found that there are four things that were common in almost all the psychometric profiling that we went through one was almost all students are highly experimental so the word jugad bandi actually stands true we indians are indeed jugadis <laughs> but it is not backed by rationality if you are not rational you are not emotionally stable and if you are not emotionally stable you are not adaptable and i think that's where the importance of good education comes what does it take to make a good leader four five things are required number one you need to be a creative thinker here is where i want to tell you a story of a very dear friend of mine dr doshi who is a great architect in his own right doshi told me a story of a man who went to standard one in a school and he asked the student how many of you are artists and the whole class raised their hand he went to fifth standard and asked how many of you are artists half the class raised their hand by the time he reached 10th standard nobody was raising their hand so obviously there is something that our education system is doing that's killing creativity in people and we need to improve that second i think what creativity actually creativity is made out to be you know you have to be a great artist a great musician you have to be a great singer that's not creativity creativity can come in any form your thoughts your actions your processes the way you work creativity can manifest itself in many forms and at midas we believe in fostering innovation and creativity the buzzword today is innovate or perish unless and until we create a bunch of leaders who are going to innovate this society is going to perish second critical thought you know socrates the great philosopher believed that knowledge can never be transferred to another human being it's already resident in a person it's how you ask the question unfortunately our education system prepares students for chasing the right answers i think we have to invert it we have to prepare people for chasing the right questions ladies and gentlemen it's very important that you prepare people for chasing the right questions third surround yourself with people more competent than you i see so many businessmen i see so many enterprises and there are people they are surrounded by and they all have yes men around them no 
that's not the way to work you got to have people who are more competent who are smarter than you don't worry you're signing the check at the end of the day you don't have to be insecure about anything surround yourself with guys who are smarter than you let them question you let there be naysayers around you empathy very thin line between empathy and sympathy empathy comes with a great deal of thinking it cannot come without reading and this is one of my greatest objections against this young generation of india you don't read enough you got to learn to be a voracious reader unless and until you are a voracious reader you will not learn to dream because you cannot take the vicarious pleasure of being into somebody else's life you cannot develop a special relationship with a book and enter into a dream world of somebody else and expand your canvas unless and until you have empathy there is a very thin line between empathy and sympathy let's say there is a psychologist and an anthropologist talking to each other when a psychologist says i understand your view point he is being sympathetic to his views when the psychologist tries to put himself in the shoes of the anthropologist he is being empathetic and it's very very important to have empathy for a good leader fifth and most importantly communication skills very bad in india we are very poor in our community we are all thinkers we all think if you think great you will become great no i think for a leader it's important to sell his dream to all his stakeholders to his employees to his suppliers to his stakeholders to his shareholders to his investors he has to sell his dream to just about every stakeholder that comes his way so these are the five cornerstones of good leadership which are creativity or innovation critical thought surrounding yourself with people smarter than you are empathy and good communication skills but that's not my life my life has been full of failures and i'm going to twist this around a bit and i'm going to tell you dream big dare to fail i think it's more important that we allow people to dare to fail because unless you dare to fail you cannot dream big then they'll just remain dreams when i was a kid i was a dyslexic as you can see here as you can see here the numbers 3 and 6 in marathi are mirror images of each other for the life of me i could not figure out the difference between this number my father went to the extent of exasperation and appointed a tutor i still remember his name his name was mr mathuria he used to teach me the difference between number 3 and 6 for a year he taught me he gave up i didn't <laughs> I failed in my 12th standard. I walked up to my mother and I was ashamed. And she said, "You know what? Goddess Saraswati sits in this house. Goddess Saraswati is the goddess of education and knowledge." She said, "She sits in this house. This house has only chartered accountants, doctors and professors. You have insulted the goddess Saraswati." I thank my mother for saying that to me because had she not said that to me, I would not have gone into education eventually in my life. That was my inner calling because I think that was the day when I said something I will do in the field of education to bring back the respect to Goddess Saraswati whom I had disrespected. When I started my photo finishing business way back in 1984, I did not receive any films for almost the first ten days. Every half an hour, I would go out of my cabin and I would ask my secretary, the receptionist there. and i had gone or come out of a mba school thinking i am going to sit in a executive shack with a pretty secretary sitting outside and i am going to you know dictate letters in those days there used to be short hand typist and i had aptly hired one and i every half an hour i would go and ask at the reception kuch aaya finally at the end of the third day she said sir bura lagta hai aayega to main bataungi <laughs> you know i feel bad if it comes i'll let you know that was the time on the 10th day i picked up my bag and i went into the dingy streets of a cd area called pudwar pet in pune to meet a customer the minute i entered his shop he looked at me and he said kahan se aaye where have you come from i said i have come from snap photo finishing lab he said a hut which literally means get out from here but i didn't give up i persisted i went to him over and over and over again for 3 weeks i went to him out of sheer pity and sympathy that man gave me a few films for processing i took them and i told him listen you just give me 10% of your work you don't have to give me 100% of your work you give me 10% of your work 
and maybe someday your supplier will not meet your requirements in time and maybe I'll be there to help you. And that's how my business grew and I used to eventually when I gave up that business when digital technology came in, I used to print 350,000 prints a day. Salute and respect those who have failed. As you walk out of this room, I want each one of you to vow to yourself that for every person who has failed in this life, one of the biggest problems of our society is we condemn those who fail. We look down on those who fail. We disrespect those who fail. On the other hand, I want you all to walk out of this auditorium and promise yourself that every time you meet a failed man, you will say, hats off to you, sir. Because here is a man who learned to fail and get up. Here is a man who learned to, you know, very often I get people who <coughs> apply for jobs and they say 2007 to 2009, there is a blank. I ask them, what happened? Where were you from? Where, where did you disappear in thin air? And they tell me, sir, I was doing a business, unfortunately it didn't do well. I said, damn it, write it in your CV, what's wrong? If you failed, so what's the big deal? You learned. So remember one thing, there is no better teacher in this world except your failures. Your failures are your best teachers. So I want you to walk out of this auditorium and remind yourself that you're going to respect every person who has failed in his life. And finally, I want you to remember something she said. She stole it away from me. And I'm going to tell you this. Remember that we are all born to succeed, not to fail. Each one of us is a unique piece of art created by God. God didn't create us to fail. He created us to succeed. So we must succeed and all of us will. I'm going to end my talk by a little poem from Rudyard Kipling. Rudyard Kipling had said, it's a longish poem, it's there on the, on the screen here, but I'm going to just pick out a few words where he says, if you can dream and not make dreams your masters, if you can think and not make thoughts your aim, if you can meet triumph and disaster and meet both those imposters just the same, you will be man, my son, you will be man, my son. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Great pleasure. Wish you all the very best.